Hello everyone, and welcome aboard the Journey of Discovery, a discovery of Entoprocta, a unique phylum that is distinguishable by their bilateral symmetry, their two cell layers of tissue organization, and pseudocelemic body cavity. This means that they have no true body cavity, and their internal lining comes from their blastosol. They are invertebrates and have no circulatory exchange system or organs that allow gaseous exchange of air, indicating that they are a fairly primitive phylum. Endoprocta originally were a part of a larger phylum, but differences in the anus positioning, embryonic cleavage, and body cavity caused scientists to reclassify Endoprocta as its own phylum. Within the phylum, there are two main orders, Solitaria and Colonialis. The Solitaria group mainly stays by itself and is known to have commensal or symbiotic relationships with sponges. Colonialis, on the other hand, are known to live in groups, allowing for efficient food gathering and reproduction. Entoprocta consists of primarily marine species that inhabit the ocean. However, the phylum can also be further broken down between those that live in salt water and those that live in freshwater. There are two freshwater species that exist, Loxosomatoids surindornae and Ernatella gracilis. Entoprocta have been found at the depths of up to 500 meters below the surface, but are not common here. They typically live on rocks, shells, and underwater structures in tidal environments or in shallow, brackish waters where saltwater and freshwater meet. For Entoprocta, such as Solitaria, the main mode of movement is by swimming. Their many tentacles covered with cilia allow for beating of the water and more efficient feeding. Their U-shaped gut has two openings with a mouth and an anus, meaning they have a complete digestive system. However, it is more common for Entoprocta to be sisao suspension feeders, attaching to a surface and filtering food particles and microscopic organisms out of the water. Here, the cilia facilitate the process of feeding by wrapping around tiny food particles like phytoplankton and moving them towards their mouth. Sometimes, sticky substances will be secreted by the tentacles to help Entoprocta grab onto their food. Entoprocta are capable of asexual reproduction through the process of budding and sexual reproduction in which they can be dioecious, having separate male and female sex parts among individuals, and protandrous hermaphrodites, which means they have male sex organs first and then female. Entoprocta are classified as protostomes, meaning that during their embryonic development, the first opening they have becomes their mouth. Additionally, the specialization of their embryonic cells has already been determined. There are no definitive studies that give information about an entoprox lifespan. However, most species have been known to have a short, free-swimming larval stage. Because most entoprocta are stationary, they do not show any migration patterns. Entoprocta are not known to have any beneficial effects for humans, but a negative one is that they may contribute to vessel fouling, or the corrosion of material at the bottom of ships. Furthermore, there is no conservation efforts underway. Now, let's learn about the evolutionary history of Entoprocta. While most paleontologists state that Entoprocta have existed 200 to 145.5 million years ago, some claim that an earlier species that lived 542 to 488 million years ago may have been an early Entoprocta. According to Phylogenetic Trees published in a scholarly article, the phylum Entoprocta is hypothesized to be in a clade with Cycliophora, which is a phylum consisting of three species of acelomates with bilateral symmetry. Additional research confirms this and states that Entoprocta, Cycliophora, and Bryzoa are grouped together in one clade that was originally named Polyzoa. This taxon includes aquatic invertebrate animals which are commonly 0.5 millimeters long and are filter feeders using a retractable lophophore, which is a crown of tentacles lined with cilia. Other significant similarities to Entoprocta include the presence of an acelomate, body cavity, and inner budding of larva. In a second study, however, their published phylogenetic tree found that Entoprocta is a sister group to Mollusca because of a hemocele found in some Entoprocta that has been interpreted by authors as a lucanar circulatory system similar to that of mollusks. Therefore, our tree is supported by this hypothesis as the goblet worm could be closely related to the clam. A cause for mistake in our phylogeny in terms of biology would be if the species sampled were part of the clade of phylums including Entoprocta, but not within Entoprocta itself. 
differences lie within the majority of other articles which claim Entoprocta is in its own clade with similar smaller organisms. However, in all trees, one can see that the phylum mollusca is adjacent to the clade, so they are still closely related. In both our 16S and our data matrix generated phylogenetic trees, we see that the phylum and species of Entoprocta remain close relatives of the phylum and species of mollusca, specifically the clams. Thanks for joining us on this aquatic adventure learning about Entoprocta.